Welcome to the Nursing Simulation Lab at Vanier College. Each semester, you'll be spending some clinical days in the simulation lab. The purpose of this video is to orient you to the simulation rooms and the patients you will be caring for during your simulation activities. Prior to your simulation day, you'll receive the patient scenario, learning objectives, readings for your scenario. Your simulation day may include two or three scenarios depending on the nursing course you're in. You are expected to wear a student uniform top and pants, bring a stethoscope and a notepad. Prior to each scenario, you will meet with a nursing teacher to discuss educational objectives of the scenario. You'll have an opportunity to ask questions and to discuss the scenario with your clinical group. This is called pre-briefing. Each clinical group will be divided into a team of students, nurses who will be caring for the patient. There may also be observers. At the end of each scenario, there will be a period of debriefing. Debriefing can include two to three students or group as a whole. Debriefing is your opportunity to reflect on your performance. The members of our simulation family are Hal, a typical adult male, Susie, a female, Baby Hal, who can play the role of a one to five year old as necessary, and Tori, our newborn baby. For this demonstration, we will focus mainly on Hal. In courses where you will be caring for a child, you will be introduced to Tori and baby Hal at that time. Please note that you cannot bring pens into the simulation room. Ink will stain the mannequins, therefore pencils will be provided. This is your patient Hal. Hal can turn into a female if necessary. You can hear the mannequin's voice from the speaker at the mannequin's neck, right next to the mannequin. This will allow you to have a conversation with the patient. Okay, thank you. you can take a patient's vital signs. The vital signs will be displayed on the monitor when you enter the room. Those are the patient's vitals the last time they were taken. Please note that if you do not perform the vitals, the values will not change on the monitor. To take his temperature, you would do so as you normally would, and a result will appear on the monitor. The blood pressure can be taken manually, only on the left arm. Results can also be seen from the BP machine and on the monitor. The brachial artery will be identified by a tape so that you can put your stethoscope there to hear the BP. Hal has a palpable carotid artery, apical, radial, femoral, and pedal pulse. Your patient's chest will rise as he breathes. You can listen to his lungs, both posterior and anterior. He has normal as well as a variety of adventitious sounds. To obtain his oxygen saturation, you must first clean his index finger with an alcohol swab. This can be taken manually. The results will appear both on the O2 sat machine as well as on the monitor. It may take a few minutes. Your patient's eyes can blink and his pupils can dilate and are reactive. He has central cyanosis which will be indicated by a blue light on Hal's face. Hal does not have peripheral cyanosis. However, his tongue can swell should he have an allergic reaction. Your patient has bowel sounds that are found on both sides of his abdomen. He has functioning stomach to which a nasogastric tube can be inserted and suctioned. The mannequin has a functioning bladder, which can be palpated and catheterized. Hal can have a seizure, which you will notice when the mannequin shakes. The mannequin's right arm is his IV arm. Solutions can be running via an IV pole 
or to gravity. The solutions will run into an empty bag placed under the mannequin. Please leave it in place. The mannequin can receive medication. If you give an oral medication, offer it to the mannequin as you would normally. If you need to give a subcutaneous or intramuscular injection, use the injection pad and place it on the location where the injection would be administered. The blood glucose can be taken from a finger or the value will be given to you. Note that you cannot assess the extremities for sensation, movement, or cap refill. However, if you ask your patient about this assessment, either the patient or the speaker in the control room will verbalize the feelings to you. Can you feel your fingers? Can you move your toes? Mannequin will respond yes. Students need to make the statements and a response will be provided for you. Color and swelling can be applied via makeup called moulage. Moulage will also indicate redness, bruising, abrasions, or bleeding. In the room, you will find all the supplies you need. On the desk in your room, you will find a phone. Hi, Dr. Smith. I'm calling regarding Mrs. Desjardins. This is the control room. This is a one-way mirror from the control room that allows your teacher and the simulation team to view the simulation as it is running. There may be other students who are acting as observers. The date and time of each simulation is written on the wall in the patient's room. Remember to use this time unless otherwise directed. The simulation is videotaped using an iPad it will be located in the corner of the patient's room. You can keep the patient's chart on the desk and refer to it as needed. Hand sanitizer is on the wall. The bedside table contains hygiene supplies, bedpan, and a urinal. Oxygen meters and suctioning set up are fully functioning. The medication cart contains a narcotic drawer. Injectable narcotics are preloaded so that you need to select the correct dose. Remember to sign the narcotic book. The stock med drawer includes all the medications that are not in your patient's drawer. The snack drawer contains food that may or may not be found in a fridge. The rest of the drawers contain syringes, IV supplies, and wound care supplies. The supply drawer contains oxygen supplies, catheterization and suction supplies, linen and incontinence pads. We hope you enjoy your simulation experience.